The purpose of an impact evaluation is to measure impacts and understand to what extent these can be attributed to the program or policy so that judgments can be made about the program or policy's value. There are many methods for data collection and analysis, so it is vital to choose those that are most appropriate to answer the key evaluation questions and assist stakeholders to make decisions about the program or policy. But what are some of the most important issues to consider when choosing different data collection and analysis methods? We are going to need some help to walk you through this. Meet Vadim. He is a monitoring and evaluation specialist at UNICEF Moldova and is in charge of evaluating the local child-friendly school initiative. Vadim has done all the necessary background work and established the theory of change, the key evaluation questions and evaluative criteria. He knows how he will judge the success of the program and test the assumptions made in the theory of change about the program's intended results. Vadim now needs to sit down with his team and decide what data are needed, how to collect them and the best way to analyse the data to answer the key evaluation questions. There are four things they need to bear in mind. First, it is most likely that they will need a mix of qualitative and quantitative data from different sources to increase the credibility of the findings and answer the key evaluation questions. Second, they will need to examine what data are already available, such as programme performance and monitoring data, records and communications, external statistics or surveys and decide what additional data needs to be collected as part of the evaluation. Third, Vadim and his team need to check that they have not overlooked anything. This can be done by creating a matrix showing which data collection and analysis methods will be used to answer each key evaluation question. And fourth, Vadim will need to check that the selected methods are doable in terms of time, capacity and financial resources. There are some particular data collection and analysis issues that Vadim needs to be mindful about and address. Impact evaluations often have to draw conclusions about large populations where it is rarely possible to collect data from every member of that population, so a sampling method must be used to collect representative data. Vadim's Child Friendly School Initiative worked with over 600 children and teachers at four different schools, so he will need to decide how to sample them at both the experimental and control sites to assess the program's impact. Although sampling is often essential, it does introduce some error into the data, as it is never a true representation of the whole population and can be biased by the method of selection. The three types of sampling techniques Vadim can use are probability, where sampling is random and findings can be generalised, purposive, where specific information-rich cases are chosen through a transparent selection process, and convenience, where cases are selected based on availability, which is quick and easy, but less credible. A good sampling strategy will enable appropriate generalisation where estimates can be made about the total population based on the findings from the sample that was studied. The quality of data needs to be managed throughout all stages of the evaluation process. The most fundamental aspects to data quality that Vadim needs to pay attention to are Validity Did the data measure what they were intended to measure? Reliability Are the data measured and collected consistently? And will the results be the same when measurements are repeated? Completeness. Are the data sufficiently free of gaps? Precision. Is there enough detail and specificity? Integrity. Are the data protected from deliberate bias or manipulation? Timeliness. Are the data up to date and available on time? Mistakes in data collection can lead to unusable data or invalid findings and can mislead decision-makers. Like all UNICEF evaluations, Vadim should follow the UN Evaluation Group's ethical guidelines for evaluation. His team should also consult the Ethical Research Involving Children website for advice on how to conduct evaluations that involve children.
the ethical guidelines for evaluation provide a set of obligations to participants of evaluations, which need to be addressed in the design and implementation of the evaluation. Respect for dignity and diversity, rights, confidentiality, avoidance of harm. BADIM engages in many best practices when evaluating the child-friendly school initiative in Moldova. For example, he first tests his data collection tools on a small group of teachers, children and parents to find out whether they might be causing a nuisance or affecting participants' rights. He also makes sure that all data collection is anonymous to protect the confidentiality of participants. When reporting his findings, Vadim knows that to engage a variety of stakeholders, the representation of data should be kept simple. He avoids using complicated or distorted graphs and makes sure to focus on the key evaluation questions with clear visualizations to strengthen the message. He is also mindful and notes any bias in the data and its implications for the findings. You can find out more about impact evaluation from the other videos and briefs in this series.